King has 200 moves. Yep. Most are useless. And that is always the issue with Tekken, right? So, like, why do they have so many moves when a lot of the moves aren't necessarily useful? Um, it's tough to say. It's tough to say, but it just adds to the, you know, fun factor kind of thing, so... Get ready for the next battle. battle, battle. Um... That is the hardest part. But you know, it's cool when you play casually because then you're like, let me just try every move possible and it's fun. All right. Oh yeah, that's true, that's true too. So I can actually reset by doing, oh, that's so beautiful. Okay, sweet. All right, so let's take a look at all these things here. I'm not worried about that. Oh no, I don't want to there, that's what I want to do. So I can actually go to the, oops, I can go to the next, ah yeah, look at this, okay, sweet. So now I can also do, but see now what I'm curious about is what's the relative leniency to these combos? Can I do, oh I can delay it a lot. Oh, not that late, but I don't have to like, I don't have to do the quick, you know, like the injustice timing. I don't need the injustice timing. I can just do, I can actually still hit it and delay it a little for like maybe a frame trap or something like that. So, oh yeah, look at that. Very delayable. But maybe not all of them are delayable. Oh, I'm, I wasn't delaying that properly. Okay, there we go, there we go. But now here's the question here. Let, before I even get into that, let's let, let's let's concentrate on movement here, right? Because like this is it's supposed to be like like you're supposed to like get really good at this, um, like the back dash into down back, right? Because that actually makes you movement a little bit better. But I think the problem is that uh, King's back dash probably isn't as good. Uh, as every as a lot of the other characters, so he probably can't move as well Yeah, Korean backdashing, but I feel like maybe for King. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea uh, Display settings Display 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 Recovery animation, what does that mean? Ooh, what does recovery animation mean? Oh, it's when I'm blue. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Okay, I like that. Um, back, back, down, back, repeat. Yep, that's how you Korean backdash. <laughs> but I, I, like I said, I have a funny feeling that Kings isn't particularly as strong as some of the other characters. It's interesting because I feel like as I'm doing it, I'm also slightly moving down a little bit. So can you do it with up back as well? I think you can do it either way, right? So if you'd wanna like literally go in a line, you really do wanna wave dash and switch between up back and up down. Is that actually a thing? Is that actually a thing? See, if I just rob backdash. Yeah, it'll make you sidestep slightly. So if I do it both ways, I'll actually keep going. Because if you notice when I was doing the backdash here like this, I'm sideslepping ever so slightly. And if I don't want to do that, it feels like the best way to do it is to switch between down back and down up to, to make it so that... Um, Right, you can also obviously do backdash into sidestep like so. But the interesting thing about it is dashes are just completely cancelable in this game, right? So like it does you don't even have to wait. There's no commitment to dashes. You can dash and block, you can dash and punch, you can dash and anything you want right away. Oh, that's the other thing too I should probably mention. Okay, well let's take a look at the difference. What if I just try to mash backdash? What happens? So why are we trying to learn this Korean backdash thing, right? If you notice, 
If I just mash backdash, look how slow that is. I can't get anywhere. So by Korean backdashing, I can obviously backdash a lot faster. And there, therein lies the usefulness of the Korean backdash. Um, or as it used to be called, I mean, it's basically used to be called wave dashing, right? I mean, that's, that's where wave dashing came from, right? Wave dashing is different, huh? Oh, wave dashing is forward. Okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, but yeah, movement is very important, which is just that right there. Because if I just mash back, if you notice, it takes him forever to back dash. So you want to do back, back, down, back, 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 down, back. And you can see when I do it right, man, he's like zipping along. So there you go. There's that. Um... Forward, neutral, down, down, forward, neutral. Interesting. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> so you have to do... Uh... God, that's hard. <laughs> Not every character is a wave dash. Oh, okay, okay. Got it, got it. Okay, okay. But uh, basically, that's the main movement thing, right? And then you gotta just make sure you learn your side steps. If you hold up, you jump, and then you can attack with moves in the air. If you hold down, you crouch. But if you tap down and tap up, that's how you sidestep. And sidestepping is very important in this game at the higher levels. I, what I've been told is that when you start learning the game, the sidestep is not something you should learn right away. You should learn how to play basically and then implement uh, sidestepping as you go. That's something that you want to learn a little bit later. Uh, but yeah, so now what the, the, the question really comes down to is what, how are you supposed to approach the offense in this game, right? So the offense in this game really is about learning how to, you know, position yourself properly, you know, really by carefully learning how to stop your back dashes, see? Like, like if I want to be at this range, like let's say I want to hit him with uh, this move right here, right? But I'm this far away, so it's going to miss. So if I want to hit him with this move, I got to learn to dash and cancel the dash into this or maybe even like learn to dash and react to what they're doing. So um, let's see here. Uh, could I demonstrate Nina's combo? Uh, sure, maybe later, but I'm trying to figure out how this character works here. So basically, you're going to have to really learn your movement stuff. The movement is the most important part. If you just sit here and go learn all this crazy, like, um, if you learn all these commands and stuff like that, you're going to get really confused, I think. So can you stop a side? Oh, yeah, you can stop a sidestep. So all the movement options can be stopped. So see how the sidestep is like sidestep, sidestep, sidestep. But I can go sidestep down back or sidestep up back and stop it early. So every movement option is cancelable right away and that is really important apparently. So there we go. Lows and Tekkens are the overheads of Street Fighter. That is correct. You want to block high more often than you want to block low because most lows, whoops, uh, most lows do not do a lot of damage. You can see there that damage was only 765 here. Oh no, that's total damage. Uh, damage is only 10. Oh dang, okay. So yeah, so basically, um, lows in general are much safer to block because they do not, they do not give the opponents as much juggle opportunities unless they have a crazy startup. So, but uh, movement is very, uh, oh yeah, all lows are unsafe, lows are unsafe on block and you can always parry them by hitting down forward, which you can see is not really a commit, right? It's like a, it's literally like a third strike parry. So that's nice. But see, like, I'm so used to just backdashing and then do, and then just kind of like trying to backdash again, but that doesn't work. You really gotta get used to the movement here. Um, okay. Some lows can't be parried. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. 
All right. Okay. Okay. So now let the question is, what are what are the attacks that I want to learn before I go learning two hundred king moves? I mean, like, let's just experiment. Everyone has punch. Every, everyone usually has left punch, which is one, right? So this is one, and I believe in Tekken nomenclature is two is is two right punch. Is it one, two, three, four? Is that the Tekken nomenclature, or is it one, two, three, four? Like, I'm curious, actually. Um, so one, two, three, four, if I'm not mistaken. Um, just waiting for this punch, punch, kick, kick. Okay, so one is two. There you go. Okay, so there you go. One, two. So one in for everybody is always going to be the punch. And one, two, if I'm not mistaken, is a combination for everybody. That is definitely a universal kind of thing. And these are really important because if I'm not mistaken, standing punch is usually your 10 frame move. And um, if you guys have seen um, my, if you have seen my frame data episode before where I've talked about frame data and how to interpret frame data, the most important thing for every video game to learn, for every fighting game to learn, is to learn the magic number. There is one specific magic number. Um, and the magic number is always essentially the fastest moves in the game. For Street Fighter, three is the magic number because the fastest light punches are three frames. In Injustice, the fastest moves are generally six frames, so the magic number is six. So in Tekken, the magic number is 10. So it is 10. So that, that's really where you want to go to. So you have to know your 10 frame move because if anyone leaves themselves vulnerable for anything that's minus 10 or more, you want to make sure that you're able to punish them. Now unfortunately, there is no frame data here. Someone did link me a frame data site. So if I go over here and go to King, for example, and I click on King, what I'll see here is that one is 10 frames as well as two. This is 10 frames as well, so, and that's, but you'll notice that most of the 10 frame moves are high. So how, how fast is King's crouching, uh, crouching one? It's 20, whoa, that's 20 frames, huh? Dang, okay. So basically, these two are gonna be your best punishes. One, two, or two, one for King. Now these are 10 frame startups, so you're gonna punish the very, very, very punishable moves. Uh, I must have the wrong, oh, down forward one is 20. That's what it is. What is down one? Where's down one? Down one, down one, where's down one? Uh, why is down one? Why, is why can't I find down one listed here? Down plus one is this. This this frame data list is really really confusing. Um, it's really hard for me to find moves in this list over here. Well, I don't think it's 10 frames, but um, basically these are going to be your best punishes. And because they're high moves, however, the opponent's going to be able to crouch under them. But this is kind of how you apply pressure. So think about, think about moves that you do that are minus 8, for example. Or think about a move that's minus 5. If you have a move that's minus 5, and I counter with my 10 frame button, there is no move that you can come out with in time that's going to beat my standing punch, right? Because mathematically, you're minus five, my move has a 10 frame startup, your fastest move is five is 10 frames, and so it's gonna come out five frames later. So this is kind of the important thing to know. If you put yourself in a situation where you're minus five, so let me look at it for King, for example. Down forward, let me see if I can find something. Okay, here we go. Um, down forward plus two is, my, this move right here is minus six. So if I do this as a minus six and my opponent blocks it, 
and he comes back at me with a 10 frame move, I have to block that move, theoretically, right now, theoretically. So here's the thing, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna do this move and now I'm minus six, the opponent counters me with a 10 frame move. I'm gonna counter with my 10 frame move. I'm gonna lose because mine's coming out six frames later. So theoretically, after I do this move, I have to respect my opponent. I have to respect him. This is the same thing as in Street Fighter V. If Cammy does a standing medium punch, she's plus two, so I have to respect. Or if I do Cammy's towards heavy kick, I'm minus two. So I have to respect the opponent's counter poke. However, the whole tricky thing about Tekken though is that the whole game is based on this concept that you know you're supposed to respect these 10 frame buttons, right? If you know you have to respect these 10 frame buttons, Tekken now becomes this whole concept of stealing turns. So Tekken is about taking turns. So I do this move here, it's their turn because I'm minus six if they block. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the CPU to block, um, let's see, guard all. So I'm gonna set him to guard all. So if I do, um, why is he not guarding all? Oh, that's action two, I see. Oh, I need to set action one to guard all. So there we go. So if he guards all like this, I'm minus six. So now I have to respect his follow-up move. But because Tekken is all about stealing turns, what happens is that you start to find out that there are lots of ways to blow up uh, opponent moves. For example, as Mr. Henry is saying in chat, there are such things as high crushes, low crushes, counters, etc., etc. So if I do this move like this and my opponent always counters with his 10 frame counter like this, because he's trying to get me to respect his counters, I can probably find a move that's a, uh, a high crush. I don't know what King's high crush is, but I definitely have one. And so basically I can do this into a high crush move and it'll beat his 10 frame counter to me. So now I'm trying to steal turns, but my high crush, hey, what's going on Wex? Thank you for becoming a general in the army here in the Gen Dynasty. You are now a powerful warrior here. Now, here's the thing. If, and see, this is where the Tekken mind games comes in. This is basically Tekken. I'm describing Tekken to you as much as I understand Tekken from absorbing a lot of things that I've heard from Eris and having conversations with LA Akira, etc., etc. So, Here's the thing, right? When I do this, boom, like this, and then he counters with his 10 frame and I do my high, my high crush because he's always countering with that. So I do this and I'm baiting him out and I do a high crush move, right? Does anybody have a, a high crush move for a king that, has, that, that I have? It's basically high crush is really just about crouching under and doing like a while standing, right? So I could probably just like do, um, so let me see if I do, um, can I make him attack afterwards? Do I have the ability to record the dummy? Um, I guess there's really no way to record the dummy, is there? Uh, just crouch to high crush, okay, yeah. So basically, I can hit this button here, or I can just, basically if I do this and I crouch like this, and then I can maybe launch him with something if I knew what a launcher, if I knew what my launcher was. But basically what happens is I do this and if I know he's gonna counter with a 10 frame button, I can crouch under it and then just whip, make it whip and then punish him with a crouching move or with a wild standing move or something like this, right? So I can just hit him, so I can do this into this. And what I'll end up doing is beating his 10 frame move. So here's the thing now, here's where the mental strategy of Tekken all comes into play. Where's the record option? Where's the record option? Is it Mimic? No. Uh, other settings here? Um, player attacks. 
counter hit. Player attacks uh, counter hit. Let's see. Um, all right, I'll, I'll I'll worry about it in just a little bit. I'll worry about it in just a little bit. I want to finish explaining this to people who are watching. So here's the thing, right? So now because. I know that he's gonna try his 10 frame move to counter my minus six move because I have to respect his button and I decide to go for a low crush by a high crush by crouching like so. So I'm gonna get his 10 frame move to whiff over my head. So what happens now is that I decide to do this and then I high counter and then I basically high crush him which is crouching under the high move and punishing him for making it whiff. But, the fastest moves are usually the standing 10 frame moves, right? These are usually the fastest buttons. So this is how you get people to respect you. Because if I come at you with my fastest move like this, if I do this move into my fastest move, I'll lose. That's why you use your fastest move, is to beat my fastest move. Now, if I'm switching over to a high crush, because I know you're going to try to you're going to try to hit me with your fastest move what the opponent really can take in what they can soak in at this point in time is that they are understanding that you are now going from this from this move to not your fastest move you're actually going to a slower move so if if I block if I make him block this and he counters with his 10 frame buttons, he's trying to train me into, look, I'm attacking you with the fastest buttons. So my counter to that now is to high crush you. So now he can go for a move that's slower than 10 frames, but still, because I'm minus six, he has an advantage. So now after blocking this, he can go with his middle button. And so if I sit here and try to high crush him, if he doesn't counter with this, and he counters with his own middle button, he's going to beat my middle button. And therein lies the strategy of Tekken once you start getting up close. It's about reading each other's actions and reading how often they're going to try to check you with their fastest buttons. So now if he decides to go with his slowest buttons, you know, etc. And the cycle just kind of keeps going around and around and around. So. That's kind of how, um, yeah, this is how Virtual Fighter works. This is how I learned it, because this is what Gerald taught me. So that's basically uh, that kind of mind game in, in the middle of this. Now, obviously, um, uh, Wex here has added, there's movement, right, which I went through early on. I, want, I really wanted to learn movement first, and especially uh, Korean backdashing, which is super important. So movement and that kind of mind game here. So now the question is, how do you approach? How do you go for offense? Well, it's very similar to Street Fighter V. This is why I feel like Street Fighter V has really kind of taught me how Tekken works really well with the with the um, with the concept of taking turns and everything like that. Now you just have to find your favorite pokes. Like I imagine that this is a decent poke. This looks like a good poke for me. Down four three. So down forward left kick. Looks like a decent poke. Not the greatest range, but pretty decent, pretty fast. And it doesn't look like I'm super negative. Doesn't look like I'm punishably negative on this. Let me take a look what down forward three is on block. Okay, so down forward three is minus nine. Down forward three is minus nine. So maybe not the greatest, because I definitely have to respect him afterwards. Uh, but thanks to the range, that kind of makes sense because at this range over here, he's not going to have a lot of fast moves. I don't think that I'm going to hit me, right? Of course, that's going to be character dependent, just like Street Fighter. So here we go. So if I pump with this a lot, I can kind of gauge this. I can use this move to gauge basically like this. So uh, let me see. Down forward three, according to this, is minus nine. That's what it says. It says as a 22 frame startup and it's minus nine. That's what it's telling me. It tells me that down forward three, four is zero. Uh, how do I do this? Let's see. 
why is my follow-up not coming out here? So it's down forward, three, and then four. Oh, I see. Okay, I have to do that one fast. Okay. So down forward, three, four. So that is actually zero on block, which makes it safe, basically. Um, well, what are you talking about, uh, Spike? I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, down four, three, and the four. Down four, three, and the four. That's zero. They say that this is minus nine right here. And you can see it. Look at the blue. Look at the blue color. They're showing the recovery. You can see Kazuya obviously turns, stops being blue before I do by quite a decent amount of time. But if I do this whole thing, we both and we both stop being blue at the same time. So you can kind of use this as a gauge of how safe moves are. Huh. So this one seems a little bit safer like this. So that's actually really, really cool. So, Oh, from Gerald. Uh, L.A. Akira, owner of the Okamoto Kitchen. That's the Gerald I'm talking about. Uh, owner of the Okamoto Kitchen, Gerald, who was one of the best virtual fighter players in the country. Yeah, exactly. So basically what now basically what I want to do is find good moves that I can kind of poke with a little bit um, like so um, But you just have to get used to how the co you know how inputs are recognized in Tekken, right? And one of the other tricky things is that you know Tekken is gonna have for example Crouching buttons, but every like almost all six directions usually give you something else but if there's a move such as down forward three, which I'm doing here like this, understand that this is not holding down forward and hitting three. If you notice, that gives me a completely different button. This is literally tap down forward and three. So that's one thing that you have to learn about Tekken is that tap the joystick and hit the, or tap the controller and hit the button at the same time is a special move. That is how you do the special move. So if I say down forward three, that doesn't mean I can hold down forward and hit three. It means I have to tap the joystick and hit down forward three at the same time. Because if you notice, holding down forward and hitting three is a different attack altogether. Same thing as holding, so holding all three directions of down and hitting three is the same move for King. It just happens to be that way. But if you notice, if I tap down and kick, it's a different move. Down forward, three is a different move, down back and three is a completely different move. So every one of these directions has a command to it. Forward three is gonna have, so this is regular standing three. Forward and three does this, back and three does this, neutral three does this, down back three, down three, down forward three, up back three, up forward three, and up three. So if you notice, there's literally nine, there's literally nine different moves with each of the buttons. So here's one, here's four, well I guess uh, for him, forward and one is not a move. He does not have a forward one it looks like. It looks like it's the same move. But for every button, so this is back and one, down back and one, down and one, down forward and one. So for the one button, he only has down forward and back. So you're really just going to have to learn with each uh, button. You're gonna have to learn with each button what your commands are. I just happened to pick three, which has a different command in like every single direction, which means it seems like it's an important button. But for example, four, this is neutral four. Towards four does this little hop kicky thing. Ooh, that seems like a really good button. What the heck is forward and four on block? Minus nine, dang. So this is actually a decent fishing button if you really, really, really want to try to poke someone for far ranges. So in other words, if I'm using this a lot and he's getting used to this move right here, if he's getting used to this move because I keep poking at him with like this, then all of a sudden I can surprise him by backdashing and then doing forward heavy kick like that. So I can do like, hey, I'm back at, oh no, I come back at you, for example, because that's minus nine. So these are all minus nine, so I can't be punished for them. It's just their turn. And now I have to interpret what they're gonna do with their turn, and I can blow up what they wanna do. But there's forward four, there's back and four. So back and four is just kind of a lunge kick like this. Also seems like a really good button. What is this on the block here? 
back on back and four is oh it's pretty minus okay it's pretty minus however they do say that there's a close for it i don't know what that means that it, on the move list they actually list back plus four close and pack back plus four normal i don't know uh what that means necessarily i don't know what close means because it looks the same Actually, no, it's slower. It is slower. So when you're in a certain range, you just get a different version of it, it looks like. Because look at the look at the time we recover in the blue. Look at the time we recover in blue. It's uh, uh the blue is da, 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 da. But if I do it from here, da, 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 da. yeah, so back three, so back four up close is um minus six so if i do it from here it's safe if i do it from here it's like minus 12 to minus 17 so it's very punishable interesting interesting okay that's good to know so there's such things as close moves in this game that's something i didn't know down back three down three i'm sorry down back four i should say uh down four and down forward four okay so down four and down forward four look like the same move basically no well, actually they look a little different yeah they are a little different okay so he has so basically uh down and four he kind of crouches a little bit and then down forward four he he doesn't crouch as much but it looks like it has better range they both hit low What's the difference between those? So let's see, down plus four. Let's see here if I can find down plus four here. Down plus, no, that's down back four. Why is it so hard for me to find moves listed in this thing? Oh, down plus four recovers crouching. Oh, okay. I see. See how he has to stand up like that? And then this one, he stays standing. So basically, you have one option that makes you crouch afterwards and one option that makes you stand afterwards. That's going to be significant. I'll explain that in just a little bit. But thank you, Equinox, for that uh, little bit of help there. For this frame data page, it's really hard for me to find a lot of these moves that I'm looking for. I see a lot of down forwards with four, but I don't see down plus four. Why is that? Back, ups, ups, forward, forward, three plus four, all this stuff here. Oh, I see. Oh, I, that's the special move. I'm not looking at the basic move section, that's why. Okay, 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 got it. That counts as a basic move. So down plus three is minus 12. So down, down plus three, that's minus 12. Down plus four is minus 13. Uh, down forward, let's see, what's down forward plus four here? Down forward plus four is minus 14. So these are all gonna be very punishable, right? Because that's the way that they all work. However, if this one makes me recover low, I could probably avoid a lot of the, uh, the, the 10 frame moves that counter with me because I can, I can actually crouch under them. So this is probably a safer button to poke with. But if they know what their 13 frame move is that reaches and hits mid, they'll be able to blow me up basically like that. But um, there we go. So yeah, you're really gonna have to learn. So these are kind of like the basic things that you really need to learn about this is that every button for the tap special moves, you actually have to tap them. If I am already crouching and I hit four, for example, oh, I see, down plus four just makes you do a crouching down four instantaneously, okay. But you see, down three, for example, is this sweepy move here, but down plus three makes me do this little stomp. Now apparently the usefulness of this move here, this move here looks like apparently is the range. But like if I want this move, now what you have to get used to is the fact that you want to not hit tap and down, because if you hit tap down like this, 
you get that kick instead. But if I hold it, then I get the longer kick, basically. Now, there's probably ways to uh, fix that a little bit. So, like, for example, if I hit, if I hit, yeah, if I just wait like a frame, I can actually get it pretty easily, pretty easily. So, and uh, so, yeah, so you really have to worry about, if you want to do a crouching move, try to avoid the tap and down. And if you can do that consistently, you've graduated and will receive your cap and gown. <laughs> bars, 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 bars. All right, so that's something that you're gonna have to learn how to deal with. So crouching punches like this, and down, oh, okay, so down and punch just gives you that instantaneously, but let's see. Um, so all my down, okay, here we go. So down forward punch is this elbow here, but if I hold down forward punch, I do this move instead, right? So uh, two, down forward two. So there you go, like so. Now. Those are kind of like your basic moves, right? So you're gonna have your buttons, you're gonna have your tap buttons, you're gonna have your while crouching buttons. But now there's also another category of moves in Tekken that's really, really important. Um, basically is the while standing attacks. So while I'm crouching, during the transition, after I let go of the controller that I'm standing back up, that's actually a whole nother state of characters. So think about in Street Fighter, if you jump, you have different buttons, right? You have different buttons while you're jumping. It's a different state. So you have different attacks while you're jumping. Well, in Tekken, while standing is all extra things as well. So for example, standing one is this, crouching one is this, while standing one is an uppercut. You see that? And uh, let me check something here really quick. Um, stand like so. So I want to get. I wanted to get hit. It's ground technique. Oh, I see. Uh, can I turn counter hit? Oh yeah, here we go. Um, counter hit, right? Is that right then? So is this gonna be a counter hit? Yes, it is a counter hit. Oh, okay, so while standing punches, that's not a launcher. Okay, okay. Just checking. That would be way too good if it was. All right, so here we go. So basically, while standing, one becomes this little uppercut here. So this is standing one. This is crouching one. This is while standing one. So basically, let go of the joystick and hit a button. So that's another state in this game. That's while standing two. So this is normally crouching two. This is standing two. That's while standing two. Same thing for three, while standing three. Nice little lunge kick that, oh my god, if I hit him, it knocks him down, holy crap. Nice, okay, so that's a good button. While standing four. It's a really quick high attack, it looks like. Oh no, it's middle, dang. That's a mid attack? Nice, okay. Oh yeah, by the way, I should probably talk about this, but in this game, there's high attacks, there's mid attacks, and there's low and there's low attacks, right? The way that that is defined in Tekken is that high attacks can be crouched. All high attacks will whip on crouching people. Low attacks must be blocked low, obviously, so you have to crouch block them. And mid attacks must be blocked. Mid attacks must be blocked high. You have to block those high. So those are these are the main buttons right here. Your main offense, you're gonna want to find good middle mid buttons. Mid buttons are gonna be the most important because they can't crouch them. Now obviously if they stand block, they block them, but that's fine. It's still good. And um low attacks are all punishable. So if you if they're crouching and you do a low attack, you they can parry them. They can punish you on block. So what you're really concentrating on is finding good middle buttons. And so like even to do wall rising, like you can see how fast I can do a wall rising, right? So I can basically, so this is a high. So four is a high, right? But if I do the wall rising right, I get the mid basically right there. So uh, I don't know if there's a way to crouch faster. Is there a trick? to crouch faster, or if you want to do a wall rising, you really just have to commit to the initial crouch. Uh, if there's anybody in the stream that knows that, if there's like a weird command that you can put in to skip the 
to skip the crouching section of that. So, uh, instant while rising. Yeah, how do you do an instant while rising? So I, I don't know if there is an in, like I don't know how to do instant while rising. So I'm really curious if someone can let me know. Do a command dash, let go of the stick, neutral. So do a command dash. Ooh, let me see. Do a command dash, let go of stick to go into neutral, press forward. Um, oh, there it was, right there. Oh no, I think that was just, oh wait, oh I think that was. No, that's a different attack, that's a different attack. Yeah, because it's definitely a different attack. Um, but yeah, the whole point is that high attacks, the ones that they can crouch under, generally are the fastest ones. Because blocking high is the safer option, because blocking low, these things don't really do that much damage to you. You really don't take that much damage. Look at this, that's damage seven. Look how little pathetic damage that does. So oftentimes you just let yourself get peppered by lows and you're not worried about it. So you block high because you don't want to get hit by these middles because you'll get hit by launchers, you get hit by all sorts of crazy things. But because the opponent is going to uh, lean towards blocking high, that's what makes high attacks effective because they let you get in a lot faster. So if your opponent is trying to poke with these middle attacks a lot, you're gonna interrupt them by throwing out highs all the time. And you're not worried about them crouching under most of the time because crouching is such a high risk. Crouching really is a call out. So forward neutral, quarter circle forward neutral. Oh, was that it right there? Oh yeah, there you go, check me out. Okay, so that's how you do <laughs> That's how you do um, a quick wall rising, okay. So basically you hit forward, quarter circle forward into four, basically. But you have to make sure your controller goes into neutral. But if you notice, that's still a decent amount of time, but it's still faster than this. So if you tap forward, quarter circle forward and four, then you come out with it. But you have to make sure you go to neutral. The reason why it's not working for me is because I'm not going to neutral properly. See, I'm not going to neutral, I don't think. Yeah, see, you can see on the on the on the thing down there. There you go. Oh, that's tough. That's tough. Down, down, forward. Oh, it's just down, down, forward. Okay, okay, gotcha. Huh. Oh, there you go. I see. Okay, that's what it is. So, so there is ways to access your while rising moves as, as, as quickly as possible by tapping forward, neutral, down, down, forward, neutral, and then hit your button, basically. Oops. Uh, there you go. Yeah, don't hold down forward afterwards. So it's not like an uppercut where you hold down forward. Make sure you let go of the joystick and then you'll get it. So that's probably the fastest way to do the while rising attacks. So there you go. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's the key right there. Make sure you don't keep holding the forward control. So you can do quarter circle forward. So you can do forward quarter circle forward and hit the button. Just make sure that you're not still holding forward on the controller and make sure you go to neutral at the, at the start as well. So there you go, there you go, so there, right, like that. So technique to learn in any case, but just understand that one of the important things is there are while rising buttons here. So god, that's fun. So there you go, so these are the basic buttons of, te of Tekken, remember, it's just regular attack, tap direction and attack. Crouching an attack and while rising an attack. Now, obviously, there's this whole category of like uh, jump attacks and stuff like that, but um, I don't think we need to worry about that. Although I've heard hop kicks are super good in this game, so. Um. All right. Um, so, uh, first things to note 
about Tekken is understanding that the magic number frame data wise is 10 frames. Also, please learn movement, learn Korean backdashing because that's going to be crucial to you to stay alive and be uh, have good movement. Remember, all your movement options, sidestep, backdash, and forward dash can be canceled at any time into any action, basically. So I can cancel these into punch, I can cancel these into crouch, I can cancel the sidestep. So all your all your actions can be canceled, all the movement options can be canceled at any point in time. So that's very important to know. Other thing is, remember the different button categories you have. You have buttons, you have hold the down and buttons, and you have tap and buttons. You also have hold down forward and hit buttons, for example, or hold, I don't know if, does anybody have hold? Yeah, I think that was it right there. Hold forward and hit two is a button, but it looks like it's the same as tap, basically. So, you know, there's basically three, ca two categories, right? Or three, ca four categories. Uh, I'm just trying to do this logic to myself. I don't know if this is necessarily correct, so if anybody in the chat wants to correct me, please do so. But the reason why I'm saying these things right now is I'm trying to logically categorize them myself and for people who are watching, who are used to Street Fighter, maybe this will actually help them. So basically, uh, the way that I see this is that there are four categories of basic moves, which is neutral in the button, then there is hold a direction in the button, and then there is tap that direction and hit the button, and then there's crouching and hit the button, and then there's while standing and hit the button. So neutral, hold, Tap, crouching, and while standing. So five different states. Five different states. I feel like that that is important to keep track of. So basically, neutral button, hold the button, tap the button, crouch the button, and while standing the button. So, and if you notice, hold and tap are definitely the same for some ones, for some uh, moves. But for example, if I hold down forward and hit, um, Here. Yeah, I mean that definitely seems just to basically be the categories here, so. Uh, what does the field button versus the non-field button mean? Filled button mean in the, uh, in the move list someone asks. Uh, I'm trying to find a non-filled button here. Oh, it's like, for example, this one, like convict kick, right? So convict kick. Um, Um, basically, I think is, oh, okay, so it's hold. So make sure you stay holding that button. So that, oh yeah, see, if you notice, if I don't hold the, if I don't hold the controller, I come out with high kick. I just come out with neutral kick. But if I hold it, then I come out with convict kick. Convict kick! Convict kick! So there you go, that's the difference right there. So make sure you hold the direction on the controller. But so now, once you've gotten past the basic, which again, in my opinion, is neutral, tap, hold, crouch, and while standing, now all of a sudden you get to all the complex things, right? So the complex things are going to be the multiple directions, right? Like down forward punch or something, or I don't, I don't, oh, let me take a look if I can find an example. I don't know if they actually, yeah, well, let me see. Um, I don't know if they do a lot of that in Tekken anymore. Like, I know in Virtual Fighter there's moves that are like down forward and stuff like, oh yeah, like for example this, Black Bomb or Jumping Knee here. So there are motion commands, right? So this, for example, is um, like that. That's the Jumping Knee that I have. And so there are motion moves. There are also obviously chain combos like so these are chain combos there are multiple buttons at the same time which usually are throws but i know that there's other ones like I, oh yeah so so two boat one plus two makes me do this like swipe here oh that's really safe on block actually that's nice that's great range holy crap and it's pretty safe what the heck what is that on block what is one plus two on block? Um, 
One plus two, no, this actually says it's not safe. It actually says it's really negative, one plus two. It says about minus 11. But why does it not look minus 11 at all? Like, it looks like I recover right away at the same time. Am I not looking at the right move here? Oh, I can fake it too, look at that. I can fake it and go for a mid like this. There's one plus two and three as well. Oh, dang, I can do a follow-up. Nice, okay. Oh, because I'm hitting him. Ah, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Because uh, I'm hitting him. I forgot I turned that off. Okay, uh, guard all. There we go. So, okay, yeah, there, 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 there we go, there we go. Okay, stupid me, stupid me. But there you go, yeah. So here's the thing. If you recognize this, and it's minus 10 at best, you can always punish it with your 10 frame move. So in other words, when you watch people, like if you watch Tekken players play, and I've seen Eris do this in commentary a lot of times, you'll see someone do a move and then there's no punish and Eris is like, no, where's the punish? That's very important. So you can temper King from doing this move if you punish with one, two every single time, right? So if you punish that with uh, one, two every single time, now you discourage him from using that move. Now, as the king player, you're like, whatever, because 1-2, if you notice, doesn't do that much damage, right? So there you go. There you go. Uh, I'm getting the frame data from a website that was linked to the uh, rbnorway.org um, has the frame data there. However, if I do this, and he wants to counter me with the 1-2 every single time, I just, you know, I noticed that I have these follow-ups, right? So I can do that, for example. And you notice that this follow-up uh, probably comes out fast enough to beat his punch. So, in other words, I can bait him into thinking that I'm just going to attack like this. Why am I having trouble doing them at the same time? Is there no plinking in this game? Oh, uh, there is plinking. Okay. But it's, the window is very small. Okay, let me... Okay, I'll talk about something in a little bit. But basically, if I do this move here, and I think he's gonna counter me with the one, two, I can do a follow-up and beat his one, two, right? I can beat his one, two. I, I don't know if this is, I don't know if uh, this is also, that, oh, that looks way fast enough to beat it. So there you go, that's kind of a way to, uh, to body things, basically. If you do this a lot and they counter you and punish you, you can get the read and start baiting them and kicking them out of their punch, for example. Now, uh, one thing that I noticed was uh, in Tekken 5 when I was learning this game is I actually had trouble doing... Whoa, is that a... Oh, this move leaves me with my back turn? Oh, this leaves... That's a back... That leaves me with a back turn. Oh, interesting. Okay. Interesting. That's a back turn in there. But... The one thing that I learned, yeah, and in fact, Grumpe just put it in the chat, is that an easy way to do multiple button moves is you can actually hold one of the buttons and hit the other button. And that guarantees that you'll come out with those. So I can hold two and hit one. I can hold one and hit two. This is particularly useful in juggle combos. So if I launch somebody with something and I want to juggle them, and let's say I juggle them with dash punch, and then I want to follow up with that move, I can do dash one, hold one, and then hit two, and that'll cause me to do the one plus two button. So that actually helps do those kind of buttons really, really well. And so basically what we have here, uh, what I was getting into was that outside of the, the, the regular category of buttons, we also have chains, we have multiple button presses, and we have motion moves. Whoops. Like so, the jumping knee here that you see listed at the top. So I think those are the only other three categories of like moves in this, I mean obviously there's running moves uh, as well. You have running attacks. Um, but um, just in terms of like neutral and stuff, those are your, gonna be your three categories of moves there. And again, you probably want to focus on finding some good uh, mid pokes. So with King already, I'm just going to concentrate on using this button and this button. 
Those are gonna probably be my favorite ones. And then from this range, I can attack them, you know, surprisingly with this one. And even though it's minus 10, like I said, I, the only thing you can punch it with is with the standing punch, so I can start baiting that out. Um, oh, interesting, I have a, you know, I have a little flippy move. <laughs> and then of course, I'm gonna want to know my lows like this. Seems like my best low buttons are, are, are tied to four here. I like my four lows the best. Um, oh god, there's a putt in there waiting to happen. So, uh, this is the console version, yes. Oh, down four one is a good poke, huh? So some people are saying that this is a really good poke. Oh yeah, look at that. It seems really, really safe to me. Uh, let me see what down four one is on block. Down forward one is only minus one to plus one. Holy crap. So depending on the range, obviously. So, dang, that's really good. Holy crap. So that is a great poke. So this is my best up close poke. So if I do this and they try to counter it and we're, and he tries to counter it with anything other than standing punch, that'll beat it. Unless it's a crouching move, right? But now if he's a crouching move and I know he's going to do that, then I can probably try to, you know, find another move, etc. That'll beat it and everything. And I just have to learn the frame data at that point in time. So, um, yeah, yeah, I know about, I, I saw the video for the Rage Art stuff. I saw the video for the Rage Art stuff, so. Um, so basically, I'm just going to look for these good pokes. And I, I've talked about this before. If you don't know a fighting game, Find your pet moves, okay? So for me right now, my pet moves for King are gonna be this, this, uh, this move is gonna be a pet move. Uh, maybe this one here, down forward four here. This elbow seems pretty good, down forward four. Oh no, that's minus 14, never mind. Okay, but down forward, down, oh no, that's down forward four, that's down forward three. That's my bad, that's my bad, I'm looking at the wrong one. Uh, down forward two. Down forward two might be listed under basics here. Down forward two. Where's down forward two? I really hate the way they list the moves in this in this thing. Two in this list. Forward, down back, down back, down back, down back. Well, oh, here we go. Down forward two, minus six. So, uh, oh God, sorry, I looked this up already. What am I doing? God, I'm an idiot. So this is minus six on block right here. So this seems like a decent pet move as well, right? So I'm gonna just basically poking with this, with this, and then of course learning. Uh, actually, they keep telling me to do two one because they're both. Um, if you notice, one two is high high, and two one is high mid. So even if they crouch under it, I might catch them with the second hit if they crouch under it and use too slow of a move. So basically, uh, I'm just gonna use this as a pet move here to poke. Uh, I'm gonna use this as a pet move. This is a pretty decent pet move here. And then, uh, like I said, I'm this. So down forward, down forward taps are all really good, but down forward one has some. Insane range, dang, that's really good. I like that, okay. Okay, so that's basically what I'm gonna be using for my pokes. So what I wanna do when I learn this game is I wanna learn the basics here. I just wanna learn those kind of things. And then I'm gonna use down and, th down and four as my low pressure tool to get them to crouch every once in a while. If the opponent never crouches, then I'll just keep hitting him with this and adding up the damage, right? And then once I can train them into start crouching, then all of a sudden I can come at you with these elbows like that. But see, oh, interesting. So if I want to do down kick into elbow, I'm actually better doing down forward kick into elbow because that one leaves me standing. If I do down into elbow, I have to wait till I get up. And so that's actually inconvenient. So it's actually much easier to do down forward four into down forward three then down and four into down four to three. See, there you go. So in other words, if I want to counter with the elbow, I got to do, I got to do um, that like so. Okay. 
Uh, forward plus four is my best mid. Yeah, I kind of gathered that. I kind of gathered that this is really super good. <laughs> oh, it's a knockdown too, huh? Okay. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, baby. Okay, sweet. Uh, hop kick. Uh, are you talking about the hot knee or are you talking about this? Or are you talking about this hop kick? This is obviously not a great move. But that one, are you talking about this move or or this move here in terms of hop kick? Or is that the hop kick right there? So obviously if I tap up, it's one thing, but if I hold up and hit it, that's a different thing. Okay. So I guess it's hold up forward then. Right? Oh, hop knee. Okay, yeah. So this is the this is the good button right here. And that should be my launcher, right? Yep. And then I get all my cool juggles, yay! But what is hop knee on block? What is hop knee on block? Up forward plus four is minus, so basically this is a good button because if I hit people, I, if I know I can punish them, so this move, for example, is up forward plus four is 17 frame startup. But if anyone does anything that has a lot of committing, like if someone say someone does something like this and it's minus 20, then I can punish with the knee, get the launch, and then I can get a bunch of damage afterwards. So, knee is definitely punishable, but that's what makes it risky because I get a combo afterwards. Yeah, I'm a Tekken player, yeah! Yeah, I'm a Tekken player, baby, yeah! Okay, um... Um... So, uh, that's basically what I'm going to try to do here. Um, so, I I'm just going to try to poke with these moves, but this is a good punish move right here. This is a good punish move if I see them whiff something, for example. Like, let's say he whiffs, uh, he whiffs something like uh, this in front of my face. I can try punishing it with the knee, hit him in recovery, boom, launch him, and then I get a combo in, in this game. And so, and then, like I said, I want to pester with these two versions of the low kick right here. And obviously, they don't have a lot of range, so, um... How did I just do that move? I just did that, uh, like, a longer sweepy kick thing. Oh, I don't know how I did that. I mean, I know that one, but I, I, I swear I did one that looked like it was longer than that. Anyways, whatever. But Lowe's and Tekken are all punishable. So they're all like the six frame overheads in Street Fighter. If you block them, you can punish them. So, and also they're all parryable as well. So they're definitely a weakness for Lowe's. And you don't get any combos off of Lowe's except for some really exceptional Lowe's that are slow. Most of the slows that you can combo off of are slow to start up so that you can really see them and block them in time or parry them even. So, um, uh, the overheads, no, I mean, look, overheads, they're a lot faster maybe than Street Fighter overheads, but it's that you just don't take any damage off of these things. In fact, you'll actually see a lot of players just take this damage. That's why Tekken gets really scary when you have no health. When you can die by one or two low kicks like this, oh, there it was right there. Like, how did I do that? How did I do that move? It just happens, oh, maybe it's, oh, there it was. No, that's not it. I don't know how I did that. Oh, down plus three and four is that? Oh, how did I hit three? I have no idea how I hit three. But obviously this is a call out. So from this range, he's scared of this move like so. If he's scared of this move like this, I can really go for a Hail Mary and go for that low and get some little bits of damage. Like I don't think that's, I don't think that's big damage. Yeah, right there. So that's 14 damage, but it doesn't knock down. It's not great. So there you go. Um, uh, all right, so now the question is, I need to learn decent combos, right? So obviously, 
you know, this is a decent punish uh, for a 10 frame button. But if I really want to get some good damage, like let's say I see them whiff a hot kick in front of me, and I want to counter with my own hop kick, and I launch them into the air, now I want to practice some combos. Now, this is where you start messing with all the other moves that exist in the game, and start finding out what you can do to link everything. Or, even better than that, you go to the internet, and you ask people, and they tell you. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, these are like little throw follow-ups that basically, it's gonna be really hard to catch someone unless they're really sleeping. Unless they're sleeping. So left punch is one, right punch is two, left kick is three, and right kick is four. So look at the bottom of the screen. You can see which buttons those correspond to. What beat crouch blocking? Everything beats crouch blocking in this game. Um, everything that you see that says mid, beats crouch blocking and I would probably say 60% to 70% of the moves in Tekken are mids. Crouch blocking is very dangerous. The correct question you should be asking is what beats stand blocking? That's the question that you should be asking. What beats uh, stand blocking? That's the main thing that you want to understand because Stand blocking is the equivalent of crouch blocking in Street Fighter. In Street Fighter, you're safe for crouch blocking. In Tekken, you're safe for stand blocking. Yeah, and mids hit really hard too.